this is the second term my third year and I appreciate the full committee and the, and the privilege to, to serve on this thank you very much um, Secretary Darcy General Bostic and General Peabody Mr. Mazzini uh, Zanthi, I'm sorry uh, it's good to see you all today this is the third opportunity I've had to uh, discuss uh, issues with you all uh, I represent the people of the 3rd District of Tennessee. I was elected in 2010, and um, I want to let you know that I listen. We ask questions, but I listen, and we try to act on what we hear. Uh, and I've been listening to you all the last two years. And it's in that regard and in that spirit that I've, I've got some, some questions and some comments. Uh, Madam Secretary, in 2014, the House and the Senate passed two key bills that made significant reforms uh, to the way that we finance lock construction in this country. Uh, by overwhelming bipartisan margins, we passed legislation that both reformed the Inland Waterway Trust Fund. As a matter of fact, I was privileged to preside over that vote in the House. And also, we got an increase in revenue. Uh, the industry supported user fee from 20 to 29 cents. Uh, so we listened when we heard that the trust fund was broken and needed to be fixed. We listened when you all said that you needed additional revenue. And uh, Republicans, Democrats, the House, the Senate, and the administration all, I thought, agreed that we were on that right course. Having said that, based on my conversations uh, that my staff has had with the Army Corps, it's my understanding that in fiscal uh, 2016, the Army Corps projects that the Inland Waterway Trust Fund will have revenues of about $107 million. Is that figure accurate? Yes, sir. Okay. So we've got the 107. Can you please tell me, Madam Secretary, how you took the $0.09 cent per gallon diesel fuel increase into account when making this determination, and how much revenue does this fee increase add? I think the, um, it's projected that the the increase in the diesel tax will generate a, between 30 and 35 million dollars a year. Okay. Of that 107 million, the fiscal 16 budget request allocates 53 million dollars from the Inland Waterway Trust Fund between the Olmstead Lock, which is first in line, and Lower Mahongahela Lock, which is second in line. What does the Corps plan, and this is probably my most important question I'm going to ask you today, what does the Corps plan to do with the additional um, Inland Waterway Trust Fund revenues that they've not allocated for fiscal 16? Because that's $53 million that's unaccounted for. Um, we are looking um, um, at other possibilities. One thing that I, I know that you're interested in is, is um, Chickamauga Lock. Yes, and um, we are currently looking at um, evaluating the priorities within that list of who's next you know because right now uh, Olmstead is sort of the first priority Mon Monongahela two three and four I think are the second priority Kentucky Lock is third and in, in the existing brand and Chick Lock is fourth um, we the Corps are currently looking at those evaluations um, so that we can make a determination of whether the the economics now are you know whether we need to look at relook at that priority and so that we hope to have that completed I think this summer Okay, so it would be fair to say that you do intend then to take that $53 million and invest that in our, in our waterways infrastructure? We'll be looking at those, at those balances as to whether we are going to be able to within, within our entire budget, which is uh, $4.7 billion. Okay. In reality, we may actually end up having in excess of $53 million if because that's a rather conservative estimate at the 53. I, I, think, it, I think so. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, I wanted to ask you a further question, Madam Secretary. This year's budget request for the Army Corps is virtually flat compared to last year. It's considerably lower than last year's appropriation from Congress. Within the Inland Waterways construction, the budget is 17 percent below last year's congressionally enacted level. When everyone from the President to both parties in Congress agree on the importance of inland waterways, can you please explain to us why funding has been cut? Um, well, it's the level that we're funding our inland waterways within the 
president's budget within our Corps of Engineers budget is what we believe is affordable at this time, given all the other existing priorities across the government. Okay. Then let me ask you a point blank question. Is, is waterways infrastructure a priority for this administration? Because it's a priority for us, for me in particular. Is it a priority for this administration? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, thank you. General Bostic, um, sir. Uh, what additional work on the inland system could be done if funding stayed at the fiscal 15 levels uh, congressionally enacted? And as a follow-up to that, sir, what kind of economic benefits would be derived from that extra investment? Just want to make sure I have the question clear. What, what kind of work could we do with additional funding on the inland waterway? If we spent at the fiscal 15 level that, that Congress enacted. I'm not clear. Um, if you spent all the money you had to spend in 15. If we spent all the money that we had in 15, what kind of work, work could we accomplish? What additional work? You know, there's a variety of types of work that we could do on the inland waterways. Um, everything from the dredging work that we, we accomplish, the, the work that we do on our locks and dams. Um, there's a number of things uh, that are in our day-to-day -day operations and maintenance uh, work that could happen as well as construction. Okay, sir. General, could you please give me an update on the status of Olmstead along with a, uh, an anticipated completion date? Uh, let me see. Olmstead, in, in general, I'd say is going very well, and re I recall the date is around 2019 when we're going to be completing. Okay. With the major work. And one final question, sir. Uh, can you please give me an update on the current condition of the existing Chickamauga Lock and what maintenance needs to be performed in fiscal 2016? Right. We do um, a study from time to time on the Chick Lock, and the last structural study was a finite element study that said uh, that is, is no immediate danger of structural failure. And what we're continuing to do with our, our meters is to monitor um, significant movement. Uh, we've got seismic monitors that are on there as well, so we're going to continue to do that and ensure that um, if there is a potential of structural uh, failure that we take whatever necessary actions we can. But right now, we, do, we don't see that as an issue. Okay. And do you know of any specific projected maintenance for the lock, the watering, or anything that is set right. for, for the existing Chickamauga lock? Yeah. No, sir, I believe it's just the, the routine monitoring and routine maintenance this year. Yeah. We believe it's the routine, routine monitoring and maintenance that, that we're doing. I, let me see. Do you want to yeah. sir, sir, what I would say is um, we have take, undertaken a very deliberate and uh, thorough approach to proactive maintenance on our locks and dams, especially in the upper Mississippi and the Ohio uh, region, which includes the Cumberland River and the Tennessee River. Uh, that, 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 that means we have a very deliberate, periodic uh, maintenance program that includes analysis that is being applied in the Chicklock. General Bostic mentioned the finite element analysis, which is done for structures that we know have technical issues like Chickamauga Lock does. I believe we're going to do an update on that this year. Uh, but for this year, I don't believe that the national district has a specific uh, non-routine maintenance uh, plan, but we'll we'll get back to you with a specific answer. Thank you, General. What we have uh, spent uh, since 1998, we've spent about 29 million in maintenance efforts related to this cough gro growth, and and this year we have 1.63 million that's included in the budget, and this is for costs for dewatering, inspections, and and minor repairs for FY60. Yes, all of which would enhance the need with the antiquated lock to get construction started on, on new check, mm -hmm. which is about a third complete. With that, I thank you, and Mr. Chairman, I yield back.